Hello, welcome to Solaris Performance. I'm your host, Gabriel Smith, and today we'll be talking about performance on Solaris operating system. The scope of this presentation is to provide you with tools that you can use to identify and address performance issues. This presentation, however, does not cover performance issues regarding directly to databases and it does not cover performance issues directed towards applications. The audience for this presentation, however, are database administrators, application support people, and Unix administrators. Solaris performance issues can be broken down or resolving them can be broken down into three basic steps asking questions, searching for broken unresponsive hardware, and using commands or utilities. Typical questions that you can ask is when did you notice the snowness of the system? Is anyone else having this problem? Was there any work recently done on the server? And what do you think the problem is? These questions may seem a little trite and a little silly, but uh, sometimes they can a actually save you a lot of time just by asking them and getting the information that you need. PRT DAG is one of the commands that you can run to get information on number one, the system's configuration, and number two, diagnostic information. PRT DAG will tell you about every single piece of hardware that's in that uh, system. Viridium ADM messages is managed by the syslog D daemon. VAR ADM messages has critical information that uh, has happened to that system. Is it plugged in? Is it plugged in? You should, would be surprised of how many time, how many problems or performance issues you can resolve just by investigating whether or not it's plugged in. And that in that sense is the memory actually properly seated in the motherboard? Is the networking cables plugged in? So on and so forth. You get the point. IOSTATS, that's IOSTATS minus capital E lowercase n will tell you about failing disk. You could also run the Explorer. Running the uh, Explorer, the Explorer is a basic uh, pro diagnostic program provided by Sun or Oracle. You run that and you send it off to them if you've paid for support. They can tell you if hardware is faulty and it just kind of went under your radar. They, all, they can also tell you if there's a patch for a specific piece of hardware that will increase the performance. Going back to IO stats, IO stats minus XN provides valuable disk statistics. All of these are average, but it gives you the wait time, the times it takes to service reason rights, and the time that the disk is busy. Again, all of these are averages. And it gives you the disk name or disk device that these stats are, get, are coming from. Here's an example of an output from my IOSTATS minus XN. You can see the wait time column, the service time column, and the percentage of the time the disk is busy, and also the disk that these stats are coming from. Now, I'm, not, I'm going to try to not go on the tangent because you can basically make a presentation on this alone. Uh, the gist of it is is that you have to be mindful of the applications or services that are actually using the disk. If it's write, if it's uh, read specific, for example, you would definitely want to ha choose a mirrored configuration. You could also consider moving things to other disks. As you can see, I have three disks that basically aren't doing anything. Uh, if you have write specific applications there is I believe it's there's a rate configure uh, called striping that allows you to uh, have fast read performance as I say you can do an entire presentation on raid levels and uh, performance to be expected along so I won't go on a tangent swap in virtual memory long story dull uh, I'll oversimplify this uh, virtual and memory and swap is are the same and again like I said I'm oversimplifying it so I can really get through this presentation 
If you want to know how much swap space you have, you type swap minus S. It will tell you how much swap space you have allocated. You will, it will tell you how much you have reserved, how much is used, and how much is available. Now let me say this. Just because you have uh, a low amount of swap available, it's not an indication that you need to add more. And we'll get into that when we talk about the VM stat. Uh, command VM stat minus P I believe it's not an indication that you need to add more because some applications uh, reserve their swap space up front and that's all the server is using is what is reserved so just because it's low doesn't mean need, mean you have to add, you need to add more okay as I said uh, swap is made up well swap and virtual memory for simplicity's sake we're going to say are the same swap is made up of RAM and disk. You can add a div disk device or you can add a disk file. You can add a file on the disk. To do that, you would type, if you type swap minus L, it'll tell you what the current swap configuration is if it's coming from a file or disk. But at any rate, the disk and the RAM make up the virtual memory, which is the swap. Paging in and out. Uh, let me go to an the another slide first. Anonymous memory pages. Anonymous memory pages. Let me just read. Physical memory pages associated with running processes contain private data or stack information that does not exist on disk. So long story dull. Uh, it's information that the processor is currently working with that it can't put on disk because it hasn't produced any output. Anonymous pages, I believe, take priority. If there's something in the virtual memory, then and it needs to, I'm sorry, if there's something in the memory that the, that the, the operating system or the system doesn't need, it's going to send those pages to the swap file and swap in the pages that it needs in order to finish its anonymous uh, pages, the anonymous pages or finish its computations. Okay, VM stat minus P. Basically, VM stat minus P is a way of getting valuable uh, page ins, pa swap or page page inf uh, paging information. So there's three categories: executables, anonymous, and file system. All of these categories have page ins, page ins, page outs, and page free. Here's an example of a VM stat minus P command. You can see the three categories, executable, anonymous, and file system. You can also see the amount of swap file that you have. And you can also see the swap uh, space that you have and the amount of swap space that's free. Now, OK, so what I was trying to say is uh, when you're trying to decide whether or not you want to replace the memory, I'm sorry, if you want to add more memory or upgrade memory, you're looking for a certain condition. You're looking for a high amount of swaps and a low amount of uh, free uh, memory. Uh, because this is an indication that this, the system is using all the swap space it has available and it still kind of uh, can't keep up. However, just because you have low swap space available doesn't mean you need to add more memory because you could have a situation where you have very low swap space available. But there isn't really an activity going on with the executable and anonymous in the file system with regards to swapping data in and out simply because it's, it's designed to use what it already has and it's doing that efficiently. And again, VM stat like uh, IO stats minus XTN or XN can you can basically write a presentation on that, and and you can just talk all day about VM stat and how to use it. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of just burn through it and just keep it simple. PR stat is another command that you can use to get basic information. I'm just going to go with the bottom. It's really self-explanatory. You can see the amount of swap uh, that a process is using, the amount of memory that it's using, the amount of CPU uh, that it's using. Adding swap space, swap space minus A. 
Uh, I didn't really talk that much about uh, CPU statistics, but there are some basic things that you can do to get CPU information. IO stats minus XTC. It will give you an extra column in that IO stats command that will tell you the uh, amount of reads and writes, or the amount the user is actually using the CPU, the amount the system is using the CPU, and the amount of time the CPU is staying idle. PR stat minus A, we talked about that. MP stats 12.5 will tell you, give you processor statistics uh, every 12 seconds, five times. Uh, zombies, basically, zombies are orphan uh, processes. Uh, run the PS minus EF command, grep defunct processes to locate them, and then you kill them with either P kill minus 9 or kill minus 9. And that depends on whether or not you want to use the name of the process or the process ID. Okay, networking, of course, IF config minus A gives you basic information about the network card. Uh, Netstats minus I is very useful. It can tell you how much a network is in queue and it's not being uh, uh, dealt with. It can give you the uh, outgoing errors and the, the incoming errors, the input output errors, so on and so forth. Ping, of course, is a really good command. It can tell you how much time it's taking to get from one from basically it can tell you how long it's taken the packets to be sent to its destination trace route is a good way to figure out what route the uh, what route the packets are taking to get to its destination I did a trace route to Google you can see that it's going through my clear spot router and then it's going through you know their channels at that point snoop is another command that you can use a snoop will basically give you information about all the network traffic on your server. You can also uh, drill it down and look at network tracking on the specific network card and as it's being sent to a destination. If you are thinking about changing your route uh, because you didn't like the information that was on your trace route output, you would want to do a netstat minus r to confirm the routing table and I believe you can do a route add which isn't or there's other route commands that you can use to, you can do a route delete to get rid of the old information and then route add to put in new information and hopefully this would uh, with, with the intention of improving network performance because you're going to give it a quicker route I guess uh, okay okay alright so with all this said the solution to all of these issues can sometimes be similar uh, in a sense that if you find that uh, network if you find that the hardware is slow then you upgrade the hardware to a faster processor, faster NIC card, faster hard drive uh, you could also consider just moving the application to maybe uh, a different server you could probably move it to different uh, hard drives, choose a different hard drive configuration. All the solutions can be similar, uh, but you know, obviously, you have to figure out exactly what the issue is before you try to determine how you're going to fix it. Okay, so this is pretty much the conclusion of this presentation. Like I said, it had to be quick, simple, uh, because I had to get through it uh, in the in the a reasonable amount of time. If you want a copy of this presentation, you can go through it and kind of see uh, all the stuff that I have uh, here and take your time with it. Uh, you can send me an email at uh, gabriel at uh, busy386 at gmail.com. You could also send any questions, comments, and concerns uh, you have uh, to me by uh, busy386 at gmail.com. Okay, thank you for your time and take care.